This is a new day to try to get right This is a new day to get on track Yeah, that's life in football This is a new day to live your life This is a new day to try to get right This is a new day to get on track Yeah, that's life in football It's life in football We are life in football You are now listening to the Life in Football podcast Check out the new website, lifeandfootball.com. Welcome to the Life and Football Podcast, baby. I'm your host, Mike V. And this your coach, Colin Moore. You know we love and life and enjoying football. Top notch coaches all around the world. Top, top notch coaches all around the world. Today we got Coach Tate on. He the head coach for them Bartow Yellow Jackets. Yes, and I'm telling y'all, man, they doing their thing. I went to a game last year um, with me and Simo. Now, it was the homecoming. I came down from Tallahassee, and uh, you know, cause we know the other coach too. But I ain't, I ain't no disrespect, but uh, they, they put a whipping on them, man. They, they, I know homecoming, you know, you're supposed to do a little destruction, but they did more than destruction. They did a hurricane, Michael, and uh, <laughs> coach now, man. They, just, I, I love what I seen from the players. They had heart. What, what I saw with them guys, they had heart when I was at that game. You know, they, they kept, they continued to go. You know, every now and then it'll get a little frustrating, you know, just with any any type, um, especially when you're dealing with younger guys. But what I saw, you know, they had hard. And Coach Tate, he's doing a great job over there. He's a leader of men. And he not just coaching these guys in football, but he coaching them in life. But without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and let Simo bring them on. How you doing, Coach? I'm doing great, man. Doing great. Glad to be here this morning. Same here. Same here, man. It's a blessing to have you on. And just, we that kind of caught pieces of your story from Coach Trotman, but I got to hear from you because y'all was crossing paths, which was a blessing for him. And, Coach, I just want to know, like, I know you and your brothers coach, so that I, your, your dad probably coached too, which I don't know. I'm just guessing. How did you actually fall in love with coaching? Well, you're exactly right there on the uh, the family part of things. I, I've been very fortunate. Football is all I've known. Football has uh, fed me. Kept me in the house, kept me kept me going in college. Uh, then I was fortunate enough to, you know, continue that profession. Uh, actually, I was born in Atlanta, Georgia. My dad was a football coach at Georgia Tech at that time. Wow. Then we moved to the University of Miami. He was the head coach down there during my uh, elementary and junior high days. Mm-hmm. Then uh, he went to New Orleans Saints. So wow. uh, then he went to Buffalo Bills. So I, I, I've, I've been through all Big type time. of football, all kind of football. <laughs> so uh, I just kind of decided at it, a it, it, uh, point in time that, I wanted to be a high school guy, yeah. uh, you know, kind of like the fella said about just uh, have a lot more influence on kids at that age. You know, once right. you get get up there and get going that other stuff, it gets kind of, uh, you know, carried away. You're just coaching mm-hmm. superstars and things like that, and you, you're really not molding young men. That uh, it, It's what I thought, you know, my calling was. Right. You know, and uh, so I, I've been blessed to uh, be in Polk County for 33 years coaching. Uh, some great teams, some great kids, and uh, hadn't always been winning. Uh, I, I seem to always want to uh, take over programs that I feel need help at that time. Right. Uh, I did that at Kathleen, my first job when they were they were at rock bottom. Uh, in three years, you know, we went undefeated and went on and uh, had three or four great years there with some great players and some great mm-hmm. coaches, of course. You right, know, right. Players always make you look like you know what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you still got to mold them and build them. And then uh, I took over at Ridge Community when it was a you know first year of school and. Mm-hmm. Uh, Won a district in the, in the third year. And I think went to play all shoot four times out there. And then uh, I always had a, you know, I started at Bartow as an as a, uh, assistant coach mm-hmm. in 1989. Right. And uh, Bartow is a great community, great place. And, that's, and, you know, that's my home. Right. Time. And I always kind of had a feeling that I wanted to get, you know, get back there at some point in time. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, like you said earlier, sometimes the Lord just uh, works things out in, in his in his time. Right. And, uh Every time I'd hit one of those new jobs, you know, Barto just hired a coach. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it just didn't work out. Right. <clears throat> and then finally here at the end, uh, it just worked out. So, right, right, so, right. So I'm blessed and excited and happy to be a Yellow Jacket. That's for sure. That's, uh, you know, I've loved all the schools, but Barto's always had a special place in my heart. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to build it. We're trying to bring, right. bring the toe back. And it's a... Uh, you know, it keeps you grinding, which which is great. It's which a is, must. Yeah, it's a must. Now y'all heard that he loved Barto. It's been on him, and he back. And we glad to have you, Coach, because 
like you said, you always get the programs and you turn them around. And I'm glad you turned us around. So now we can keep rolling and keep the thing going and keep it going to where it's just Lord's willing. Well, we state, state, state. It, you know, it feels a lot to happen, but right. you're building, which I love. So tell me this, though. What made you want to go to the schools that you had to build instead of some on like, you know, you could go to a school that's got a name, which we good. We do have right. a name. But right. I'm saying like you could go to one that's be solid for years, which we good, but not like to that point. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think it's, a, uh, you know, like I said, some type of calling in my heart to kind of pull mm -hmm. for the underdog. Right. Uh, then also when you, when you start this uh, trying to move from the, assistant realm to a defense to a coordinator of some mm -hmm. kind and then to a head coach's job. It's not like I had to apply for some of those. Right. <laughs> they just told me I wasn't ready. Right. So <laughs> then when I found one that wanted me, you know, right. then then I kind of fell in love with that, that mm -hmm. underdog status to uh and there's nothing more status, you know, <clears throat> I'm not these other guys do a, a you know a great job. We've got great coaches in the county. What mm -hmm. what Castle's done with Lakeland over forty or fifty years, whatever it is, has been tremendous. Right. Uh you know, right now, I'm, I guess it's probably me and him. And right. As, the head stays as, uh, as an old cat. Uh, now, he stayed steady, and, and, and I felt the need to, uh, you know, jump around a little bit and try to help where I, where, where I could. Right. But uh, I, I've been blessed, man. I mean, you know, sometimes you, uh, you know, everybody, everybody wants to win football games, and sometimes when you take over a program, you have to be patient mm -hmm. and, and build it, uh, you know, from the ground up. Right. And, uh, and, and sell a dream. And uh, so that's what I love doing. And, uh, you know, it, it's tough nowadays, you know, especially with this, uh, you know, they have the free agency here in high school like they do in college. <laughs> and, and Wide it, open now for some right. reason. Right, and it's, uh, you know, it is what it is. I, I always want kids to have their best opportunity. You know, of course, that's why we're in education. That's why we're in the coaching. Uh, I, I just hope it all pans out and, and that the guys that are, that are trying to build can, can get it without, because uh, they're going to have players. Right. And, and guys that, that buy into a certain mindset and to stay and to, and to understand it's going to work out. Mm -hmm. And right now they're giving kids just a lot of uh, opportunities to get on the green side of the fence all the time. Right. Now, Coach, um, I, wanna, I heard you talk about your dad and all the different jobs he had. That's actually interesting to hear, too, all that. that you know, it kind of... Had me thinking like, oh, I'm gonna actually want to mind having a dad, you know, moving like that. But I want to know like, how was it for you growing up? Like, talk a little bit about your mom and if you got brothers and sisters and how okay. was it? Yeah, that's so proud of my, I love my family. I, I was blessed. Uh, my mom just passed about uh, a month ago. Sorry she lived, to hear that. She lived to 99 years old, so uh, she was a strong you. woman. Uh, came from a family of six kids, three girls, and then the three boys came along and. Uh, the moving around made you kind of, you know, uh, a little bit tough, mm. you know, and, and especially when you're, when you're, you know, I don't want to, you know, sound boastful, but, <clears throat> excuse me, but my dad was at the top of top of his game. Mm -hmm. I mean, when he was defensive coordinator at, at, at Georgia Tech, a lot of people don't understand those those early sixty days with the, uh, I mean, I was, you know, Bear Bryant at Alabama, his head coach was Bobby Dodd at Georgia Tech. Shook George Nick Auburn. I mean, all the old guys that right. really made this thing happen were, yes, were happening when I was little. Mm -hmm. You know, Charlie McClendon at LSU. Yeah. Uh, Ray Graves uh, was actually on that staff at Georgia Tech, and he took the Florida job. So it was it was kind of like a a, a part of some great coaches. Mm -hmm. But the, but the pressure was always on you as a as a kid, as a competitor myself. Of you think you all that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Your, your daddy's this. Your daddy's that. Right. And then you move from one town to another, and, and you know here you go. You know, you, you got to do your thing. <laughs> so that 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 kind of made you tough. It made you uh, you know compete and, and, and want to live up to the uh, to a certain standard. Uh, but I, I was blessed to those times, and also learned the uh, a lot of lessons on, on the ins and outs of that of that, uh, that big time football. Mm. You know how, how how great it can be, and then how it can turn so south on you, and all of a sudden you got. You get a losing season. You got moving vans in front of your house. You got for sale signs in your yard that you didn't put out there. You know, people just <laughs> they trying to get rid of you. <laughs> time to go. <laughs> time to go. So uh, it was funny. I'll tell you this one story that uh, I had a, a niece get married uh, about two weekends ago in Macon. Mm -hmm. So I'm up there in my sister's there, and 
she's like that. She's about eight years older than me, and one of her best friends was there from Atlanta days. Right at Georgia Tech. Right at mm. Tech. So uh, when my dad got the job at Miami, because uh, my mama jumped around a little bit before I was born, they were at Miami High. Then my dad went to coach at Florida, mm. and then uh, actually my older brother Charlie was born at Gainesville, mm. and then daddy jumped to the uh, up there to Atlanta. Mm. <laughs> so. Uh, she said, I remember the day your daddy got that job at, at Miami. Right. Y'all came home from school. And your mama said, load the station wagon. Did, <laughs> did, we moved again. Yeah. <laughs> did it, didn't even use boxes. Just did it, get in the car. <laughs> and, and, and the, all the drawers in the back of the station wagon. And here we go. So it was that kind of life. And just, you know, full of excitement. But, uh, you know, again, uh, blessed to, uh, as, a, as a young guy, to be in, in, in big stadiums and in big games and have you. Your, your heroes that all these guys don't know about, right? Know? Yeah, they should. Yeah, yeah, they should. You know, some of, some of the old guys that, uh, you know, kind of, uh, you know, set the tempo for for what this game is. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's the thing that, uh, you know, it's a little bit strange now when you when, when you you know, if you want to call me old school, yeah, I'm old school. Hell, I'm 64 years old. <laughs> I mean, I, I can't help it. Right. You know, that's that's where I came up, and I understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've changed some in, 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 my, in my way I handle things. You know, with kids, they're a little bit different. But the uh, one time I had the opportunity to talk to uh, Mike Ditka. At the, uh, I had a kid, Carlos Williams from Ridge, that made the uh, All American Under Armour game. Mm -hmm. And Ditka was helping out in the prime time and all those guys were up there. So, uh, you know, Ditka was kind of frustrated, you know, and uh, so we were just talking. And, uh, He's. I, I'm just kind of frustrated. These kids nowadays just really don't respect the game. The game of, of how we played it and how we we made it what it is today. Mm -hmm. You know, there's nothing wrong with some guys having a good time, right? And celebrating, you know, certain ways. But uh, he said we pay the price for this now. I mean, mm -hmm. the equipment we played in, the injuries yeah. we we had, the lack of training that we had, the lack of training rooms. Right. Or, you know, it was always. You know, put some ice on it, rub some dirt on it, and let's go. go. You know, you ain't heard back to the, uh, you know, Lombardi days. But mm -hmm. uh, anyway, so it's just been a great game. I know that. I know that. And uh, also, I mean, part of my coaching, uh, I guess, style is I was fortunate in college to play for a guy that played at Oklahoma under Bud Wilkerson when they won their 40-game their winning streak, and then he went and played for the Green Bay Packers. They played for Lombardi mm -hmm. with my D-line coach in college. So he taught me so much. A guy named uh, Cecil Morris just on uh, just overall toughness, man, just on toughness and how you can endure and how you can get through things. And that's what I'm trying to pass on to these kids, right. man. And we're I mean, thankful to have you doing it. I mean, I can't, you can't help where where you come from, where you start at, but but there's an avenue to, to success if you follow a you know, a path. Right. You know, and don't stray. Mm -hmm. You know, or if you do stray, get back on it. Yeah. We, we've all, you know, we've all done that. Mm hmm So, uh, anyway. Now, y'all just heard the legendary Coach Tate talk about his life with his dad, mom, coaching style, and what he trying to pour into the young, the young adults out here. And what I love about it so much he actually mentioned it a few times, like, "Hey, you know, I'm, you know, I'm trying to make sure I connect with these kids to do this or do that, you know." And that's mainly what they need, you know. All up, me and Seymour, we played football, and when you <laughs> when you're young and just running around, you know, you think you can uh, rule the world and run over anything, but you really can't, you know. So sometimes you need that coach Tate to be that. No, no, that ain't gonna work right there. Now. <laughs> you know, you need, you need you need that every now and then to happen. So yeah, that's know, right, that's right. I I gotta thank Coach Tate, for, you know, for the job he's doing at Bartow. You know, even that game I went to last year, we enjoyed the game. Great atmosphere, great fans, and they had a great um game plan that day actually as well. And uh, you know, shout out to all the head coaches out there because y'all inspiring a lot of young kids. And, you know, that's one thing you're going to always remember is your coaches, especially when you play football. But it might not, in that moment, now sometimes you be hot as uh, a firecracker, as my granddaddy used to say. <laughs> you're going to be mad at them at that moment. But after you graduate and kind of move on, you just kind of sit back and laugh like, oh, that, man, coach used to always say that. But it's just good, fun, 
and remembering the time that actually help you grow. And I'm going to leave y'all how I always leave y'all. Keep your head up and not down, or else you'll fall to the ground. This is the Life of Football Podcast. Catch you next time.